please let me know. Um, just give it a couple seconds. Okay. So the first thing, first thing I want to talk about is um, some things that I've seen in the news, and then we'll get to the Bible study. That's where's my phone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Please give me just 15 seconds. I got to get my phone. One second. Okay, sorry about that. So this, um, I was reading in the news about this topic here, global vaccine passports. So we all know on this call, I'm sure we all know we're living in the last days. And based on some conversations that I've heard throughout the week and just some th- some videos that I've watched and some articles that I've read. Um, I really believe we're very, very, very close um, to Yah's return. And when I say very close, I mean like within years, possibly, and um, in in our lifetime. And this global vaccine passport. Some of you may have heard about it, but. This article from the cons- the EU conservative, it says dystopia, EU and WHO sign global vaccine passport, or I'm sorry, yeah, passport deal. So I read just a little, little bit of it, but it says representatives of the, of the World Health Organization and the European Commission signed an administrative agreement and letter of intent at the WHO headquarters in Geneva on Monday, June 5th, for the upgrading of the EU system of digital COVID-19 certification to be used globally in future health crises. So basically what's happening here is that there's a system that they are using in the EU and this system now the WHO the World Health Organization is is signing on to use this this system in order to pro- provide uh, certification for different um, health crises when they when they come basically allowing nations to be certified so when there's another pandemic that occurs or some kind of health crisis that occurs the who is going to have the authority over whatever nation that they are uh, in partnership with in order to administer health protocols and health um kind of like uh when we had the 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 digital cards in the u.s to kind of certify that you have been vaccinated and all that type of thing. So, but now it's a global, globalist organiza- organizations like the EU and the WHO are going to be the ones that are in charge of that. So what that means is that the, the nations are giving over their sovereignty. And this is this is really what you would expect if you believe in the bible you know nations are going to give over their sovereignty to the beast and so today we're actually going to talk about money um but this extends in every single area within the government uh health care is just another way of looking at this um I'm not going to read all of this, but what I will do 
is I'll post this link in the chat so that anyone that wants to read it can. So I'll do that now. And then the next thing I want to show, we've talked a little bit about CBDCs uh, when I first started hearing about them uh, last year. Uh, but now C CBDCs, which stands for Central Bank Digital Currencies, are being implemented now in nations. For example, like Nigeria, which is one of the first nations to implement um, CBDCs and and they are banning cash so what I want to do is watch this video we're gonna watch this video and um, it's there's it's actually two videos I'm not sure if we'll watch both of them but we'll at least watch one of them and ha and as we watch this, you're going to get a better understanding of what's going on in the world in terms of our monetary system. It's everything so, you wish for. Your site traffic is sky. Give me one second to get this uh, audio working. I stumbled on this video that really, really glad. Me. It's not only your account that is going to be linked. Your phones are going to be linked as well. They laughed at me. Not long after that, they saw that the thing just happened. If you don't have an IN, your phone is shut down. It's happening before our eyes. You see that? And where did it start together? And I said, okay, the next time I'm going to be in front of the camera, I'm going to put all this together and just release it. And then I stumbled on this video. And this brother, I'd never seen him before. He just did such a fantastic job of explaining every single thing that I was planning to put in the video. And so what I decided to do was I said, I'm going to just get you guys to please pay close attention. Every single thing you're about to watch is real. It is what is coming. It is what is almost here with us. This is what I keep saying to us. When you know what is happening, you are better prepared psychologically to deal with the fallout when the time comes. Because the plans they have are very draconian. They are very dangerous. They are things that will impact you. They are things that will affect you. And so why we show all these things is not to stoke fear, is not to instill fear in anyone or to you know, do some type of propaganda or fear mongering. It is to prepare you psychologically. That's why we show you all these things. So I don't need to do any video again because this, my brother in Christ, has done such a fantastic job. So please pull up your chair, get your friends and family, and come and listen to what is going on with this whole central bank digital currency that is launching all over the place. And so you can understand how it is all connected to the mark of the beast because in no time if you don't have this mark if you don't have your bvn your nin which they have now used to you know connect everything when the bv 
CBN was launching, I told people in Nigeria that at the end of the day, it's not only your account that is going to be linked, your phones are going to be linked as well. They laughed at me. Not long after that, they saw that the thing just happened. If you don't have an IN, your phone is shut down. It's happening before our eyes. You see that? And where did it start from? It started with COVID. Remember when a Doe State gov uh, governor announced that if you didn't have your proof of vaccination, that you were not going to be allowed into any event center or into a shopping mall or into any public place at all. That was the launch of draconian leadership. It started with COVID. And now from COVID, they have moved up to the point of CDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies. Let me say no more. Watch this. I want to begin by sharing a particular announcement that was made at the World Government Summit just a few months ago. And we're all familiar with these words. And the title of this session, Good Samaritans, are we ready for a new world order? Listen. How does a funnel change anything, let alone how does a funnel change everything? Well, a funnel can change the car you drive, the house you live in, and how you travel from here to there. It can change your vacations, how you educate your children, and whether or not you get to spend the most of your time with the people that you love. And the title of this session, are we ready for a new world order? As I sat back there in the office praying to come forth, I said to myself, Elder Buchanan was in the office, and I said, I need to begin almost all of my presentation with that one announcement, with that startling question. Are we ready for the what, my friends? The new world order. Now notice here. In chapter 13 of Revelation, the Bible speaks of this coming new world order. It says, uh, again, if it's a new world order, there has to have been an old world order. Do you agree with that, my friend? And in God's order, we find six days he would labor, do all his work, but on the seventh day he would do what? He would rest. So what is this new world order about? If you were to simmer it down, it brings us to false worship, Sunday worship by law, with penalty, we won't be able to buy or sell. Now notice, who is calling for this new economic order? Economic, economic order. Who is calling for that? Mr. Antichrist himself. It's clear. And we're told... Who controls the food? Who controls the food supply? Controls the people. And who controls the energy can control whole continents? Read the last one with me. Who controls money can control the whole world. All right, friends. A new economic order he's calling for. A new economic order. The tentacles of the mother of all beasts. And why would they want a digital economy? Because with a flick of a switch, they could leave you without a what? A penny. Take a look at this, my friends. Today, oh, my friends, today, I'm going to focus on the continent of Africa. And I want to be very specific. Several countries comprise Africa, I want to focus on the country that has the what? The largest economy in Africa. Which country is that? Close. Africa's largest economy, that's Nigeria. Beloved, I believe we can see exactly what is going to blow across the waters from east coming west to America as we consider what is transpiring right now in Nigeria? My friend, please buckle up your spiritual seatbelts right now. Watch this. What is Nigeria launching and has launched 
Nigeria launches eNara, which is Africa's first, what my friend, digital currency. It is Africa's first. May I ask you a question? Which country in the Caribbean was the first country to launch a central bank digital currency? Jamaica. I said to Elder Buchanan earlier, I believe we can make a comparison between Jamaica and Nigeria. What Nigeria is to Africa in the area of the economy, CBDC, Jamaica is to the Caribbean. Jamaica is to many other nations. Jamaica and Nigeria are joined at the hip. You will see that. You watch. All right, and notice now, how is Nigeria trying to move the population to accept a digital-only economy? How are they doing that? Headline, Nigeria to limit what? Cash withdrawals to $225 a week. Could you subsist and survive on that? It's your own money. And yet they place a limitation on your own money. So what will come to America when America launches its own CBDC? They are going to put limits on your cash withdrawals. By the way, mark my words. What's, what's today's date? May 20th, 2023. Mark my words. And by the way, when will America roll out their version of CBDC. What month of this year? What month? July. That's approximately two months from now. All right. There it is. Nigeria caps ATM cash withdrawals at $45 daily. Think about that. Why? Why? It's right there. Nigeria Central Bank slash the daily withdrawal limit from automatic telemachines in a bid to boost what, friends? Their digital economy is coming to America. Did you know the average starting salary for a junior programmer is $75,000 per year, according to... All right. As if God is saying, show my people what's coming. Since, not if, since they can do this, to the largest economy in Africa. You think it's difficult to take over Jamaica? Hmm? And any other country or continent, south or north? Nigeria, Africa is your testing ground. Watch this. Not only there, EU, what? The, the whole European Union pushing the so-called criminalization of physical cash with, anti, with new anti-money laundering law. Here it is. They set limits up to 7,000 euros for cash payments and 1,000 euros for crypto asset transfers where the customer cannot be identified. No transactions over 1,000 euros. In Nigeria, it's lower, $225. Look at this. Experts raise concerns as Nigeria limits what? Cash withdrawals. Now watch this statement, friends. I'm going to share with you that Nigeria and Jamaica are joined at the hip. Look at the red words right there. It says, the policy is intent, by the way, this is not some, what they call, alternative media posting this this is mainstream media washington post watch this red word the policy is intended to cause discomfort to move you from what to what from cash to cashless because the central bank have said they want to make it how uncomfortable number one number two expensive for you to hold cash have we ever heard someone say it's too expensive to deal in cash watch this who is that the prime minister of jamaica 
Most Honorable Angel Holness. There are some countries now that you go and you go in your pocket and you take out cash to pay your bill. And they say, sorry, I'm sorry, sir, we don't take cash here. It's the reality. It's too expensive to deal with cash. So a lot of businesses are converting their systems away from cash. It's too what? He needs our prayers, amen? Do you see it? Because he's simply carrying out the agenda of the central banks. The Bible calls them merchants. And who controls the merchants of the earth? The papacy, Revelation 18, verse 2 and verse 3. Watch this. This is the world economic forum saying the very same thing it's too expensive to deal in cash listen so our alliance we so our alliance we started six years ago with the question is cash enough of a problem to focus on it for for an alliance to be built focusing on that one problem you heard from Anne this morning it's expensive to truck cash around if you want to be paying salaries. It's unsecure, it's inefficient, it's untraceable. You know the problems, we've talked about them today. It's on what? All right, we got that. Notice here, my friends, here it is. Jamaica has become the first nation in the world to issue a CBDC as legal tender. My focus today is not on Jamaica. I covered that during midday power surge, probably two or three days consecutively. My focus is on Nigeria. Look at the red words right there. Which two nations are joined at the hip? Black words on the line. It also claims that 10 countries, including what? Nigeria and the Bahamas, all right? are all pushing one cbdc they're all joined at the hip my friends look at this another article abc news britain home to the world's second biggest financial center is trailing playing catching up <laughs> catching up former colonies such as what nigeria the Bahamas and Jamaica in rolling out what, my friends? CBDC. More than 80% of the world's central banks are considering launching. How are you going to escape this? 80% of the world's economy? I don't know why a professed Seventh-day Adventist would even run for political office. It makes no sense because now you're on the actual thread of the puppet master. They poke, you move. They say jump, you say how high. You have no freedom. And that's why they take over the people's freedoms. Am I focusing on Jamaica here? Mm -mm. Nigeria, get back here. Nigeria to ban cash withdrawals. Did you just see the downward progression? First, they limited your cash withdrawals to move you from a cash to a cashless only economy. And now what is the next step right there? Look at the date. By the way, you know what? Watch this carefully. Watch this. Come back with me along the road here, my friends. What date is that? December 7, 2022, Washington Post, limit cash withdrawals. Move on now. Enough. I don't, I'm not past that. Come to this now. What date is that on the screen? February 6, 2023. What date is that? January 5th, 2023, Nigeria to ban cash withdrawals from government accounts. I call this the downward steps to dystopia, the downward steps to the mark of the beast. Watch this, my friends. Watch carefully here. Nigeria's central bank orders banks to close accounts of all crypto users. 
Why would they want to close down the bank accounts of cryptocurrency users? Why? Why do you think they despise cryptocurrency? Anybody knows? You're whispering. Talk to me. They can't trace it. It's not as regulated as the regular fiat currency and the digital currency. Unregulated, so they say. Now, you watch. Imagine. So you are a cryptocurrency holder in various banks, and the head says, you bankers, bank owners, close all those accounts. What will the bankers and the banks do? Close the accounts. Or they go out of business. Do you think the bankers will go out of business for the minority? Wake up, friends. So now, what's going to happen to our funds in our banks? Watch this. Four banks, four banks fined in Nigeria for allowing crypto transactions. So the banks that did not follow the government's rule, what happened? They were, they were financially penalized. Look at the date right there. April 6th. The first one was when? February 5th, 2021. I'm giving you the steps. Pass that, my friends. It says, uh, Nigeria's central bank reportedly freezes crypto traders' accounts. And do you know what they will say is the reason? Well, we want to stop fraud. Matt here just got final payment on his biggest contract yet. And it was actually pretty easy. May I ask you a question? Do you think the powers that be can create, get their stooges, their imps, and they create cryptocurrency accounts and perform fraudulent acts so that now their bosses can say, as a result, we must shut down all cryptocurrency accounts. Do you think they'll do that? If they can stage 9-11, uh, if they can stage Pearl Harbor, what is this for them to do? Wake up, friends. If Nero, Emperor Nero, could do that, burn down the, the, the building and then blame the Christians, that's in history. If Nero could do that, what's that to these men over here, friends? Watch this. Nigeria's central bank closes crypto accounts citing what? That's your boogeyman. Off my screen. Watch this. See, I think if, if you think what are the tools of the new world, everybody should have a digital ID, everybody should have a bank account, everybody should have a smartphone. Okay. Then anything can be done. Everything else is built on that. Because we were talking about this yeah. before we came onto the panel. The three basic things a smartphone, a bank account, and a digital ID. Yes. That's where every nation... Uh, in India, the, it's been named by the Prime Minister the Jam Trinity. Jandan, which is the bank account, Aadhaar, the ID, and mobile. No, shouldn't cost that much. Oh, nothing. Friend, there is an order, a consecutive order, that we must have with these three things. It says cell phone, what's number two? CBDC, the CBDC is your bank account. And number three is what? A digital identification. Now you're going to see in Nigeria, if you refuse to go to the various offices and uh, offer, give up your biometrics to get a ID, you can't bank nor can you have a cell phone. They're going to block cell phone use, close your bank accounts, if you refuse to get a digital ID in Nigeria, what we're seeing there is coming to America. Mark my words. Watch this. Listen. And the reality, as the financial system gets more controlling and more invasive, it's a little bit like bringing up a corral around us. And CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, and vaccine passports or digital IDs are sort of the last 
uh, shutting of the gate. Yep. It's hard for many people to imagine the risks here because we're so used to living with financial transaction freedom. And we don't understand that when this gate closes on us, we literally will be sitting in a system where the central banks believe that our assets belong to them and they can dictate where we can spend money and what we can spend money on. Have you ever been traveling to go to a particular place of business somewhere and you had to be there at a particular time or else the doors would be what? Closed. As you're driving, you're making sure mm, you're hoping to get there on time, right? So when will these doors be closed? They're telling us Agenda 2030. That's their public date. 2030. Some people say 2027 to 2030. When must we get ready? Watch this. That's Luke 21, verse 20 through verse 23. Watch this. Minister says Nigeria's ambitious digital ID registry should be complete by when? 2025. Watch this now. So Nigeria are pushing what two things so far? CBDC and what? Digital ID. Don't you forget those two. Watch this now. What is Jamaica promoting? Well, listen for yourself. In the coming weeks, I will be, and days, I'll be making certain announcements regarding the acceleration of Jamaica's intention to become a fully digital society. We are well on our way to this. We have established the national identification system. We have put in place our digital currency. We have given directions to our ministries to digitalize their operations. It's over. Most of our ministries are now moving from paper-based systems to digital systems. Our military is transitioning. Or what? Watch this now, friends. Watch this. Listen to this. What's coming? Um, I think it, it's very hard for people who've grown up and enjoyed Western liberty and, and human liberty to imagine literally that we're going into a system where literally our homes, our cars, our communities become digital concentration camps. Become what? Watch this now. Nigeria reaches 90 million digital ID registrations as database capacity issue looms. How many? Watch this now. Hear this. Nothing is going to be hidden. In this new world, we must accept transparency. Amen. I will take total transparency. Banking secrecy, everything is going to be transparent. You have to get used to it. You have to behave accordingly. It becomes intelligent. If you have nothing to hide, you shouldn't be how afraid. In this new world, there are many people who don't accept the transparency. Saying that you don't care about privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about freedom of speech because you have nothing to say. All right. And what's coming now? Watch this now. The Central Bank of Nigeria wants to link its what? Central Bank digital currency to a what? A digital ID system. Listen to this. What's coming? An Aurelian surveillance state. Universal access to e Naira is a key goal of their central bank note. In other words, if you don't have their ID, you cannot bank, Pastor. Is that really coming? Let me continue. Watch this. Okay, everyone. Um... I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to go back to the screen.
Okay. So I wanted to share that with you because um, I want you to know what's going on. I know uh, a lot of people know about the CDBCs, the digital currencies, central bank digital, digital currencies, but there's a lot of people that don't. So that's why I'm talking about these things like the global vaccine passport and the CDBCs, because these things are coming here very quickly. And they're already here in some cases, as in we see the case in Nigeria. And you see Jamaica is already run, uh, headed in that direction as well. And pretty much the majority of the nations are going to all be a part of this. And you see the global push by these global organizations. And then we have leaders such um, such as uh, Joe Biden and his administration who are in partnership with these organizations like the WHO. And they, they're basically giving up the sovereignty of America. So next, as he said in the video, next month, the U.S. is going to launch its digital currency. In so in July... So um, these things are just making it easier for us to get to the point where you cannot buy or sell unless you have a, a mark. Um, does someone raise their hand? If someone rose, raised their hand, I can't see it. But... Um, Anyway, this we're going to talk about money today, not it, not necessarily what like the videos we just watched, but I want to pose this question: Should we work for money? And the key word here is work. Um, this question it seems obvious, but. I want to see what the word has to say about working and specifically working for uh, for money. Um, I, before we go into that, though, was was there any comments? It's like I, I hear a, a, something going off, but I don't know if that's somebody trying to comment. Both Ms. Rose and Ty had put uh, comments in the chat. Oh, in the chat. Okay. I, I can't see it on both my screen. Thank you for letting me know that. Okay. I can't I can't read it for some reason, but that's okay. So, so Ms. Rose said, if you want me to read it. Go ahead. Ms. Rose says, as we were listening, the verse of the day popped into her phone and says, do not store up for yourselves wealth here on earth where moths and rust destroy and burglars break in and steal. <laughs> and then Brother Ty says, hey, Brother Ty, good to see you, by the way. <laughs> that is why it is so easy to say that African-Americans will be given recompense for slavery because the elites know that none of it will be worth anything. Uh-huh. That's right. Amen. Both both uh good comments uh so it's both of the comments are really related to what we're talking about especially roses should we work for money so my answer since no one answered anything <laughs> is it depends what do me what do we mean by work now Oh, go ahead. Oh, is that Rose? Oh, okay. Thank you. So it, no, it was me. Okay, go ahead, Lisa. Well, the scripture says that a man that doesn't that if you don't work, if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. You won't eat. Yes. So, um, and the way we purchase food, unless you're a farmer, is with money, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. That's my thought. Okay, thank you for putting script scripture with it because when you add scripture, it makes it easy. <laughs> it makes it easy for me to say yes. That's a good answer. That is a good answer. 
if if you don't work you should not eat and the way most of us get our food well all of us on this call but most of us in society is we have to have money to purchase it is that the ideal way okay ty says i'm a farmer okay so i guess he's working his way off of having to purchase food because he is growing his own stuff so i specifically asked about money but yes we do need money for food anybody else want to, uh, add something here we don't we're also need money. go ahead i'm sorry joshua go ahead we need money for for other goods and services yeah and so there's got to be some form of a currency to use to be able to acquire those things that we need it would be lovely if we could all be farming unfortunately most of us are not in a position to where we can do that uh, not just having the land necessary to do that when i think of the two garden beds that i built for mom or the, we put together for mom that's only going to feed her so much mm -hmm. we need more land in order to really uh, provide food or farm the way that it'll be you know very beneficial to us and then that goes back to how when it came to land how we've been discriminated upon for centuries mm -hmm. yeah that's 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 a good answer you can't do much if you don't have land and we primarily live in cities even us that live in the suburbs or in the country still it's their neighborhoods it's not it's not like we own a farm and farmland and even if we did uh even if we try to have a lot of a land land is expensive and so most people with our everyday salary can't really af afford to have a the amount of land you would need in order to provide for yourself nor do we have the time or skills if we're out working all day long with the skills and talents that we do have when are we going to have time to actually do farming on top of that being trained to do it yes okay yeah and i would also add you know the another scripture for you is that money answereth all things yes, you know and so even if we had kind of like what you know joshua brother johnson was saying if I had, if I did have my forty acres and a mule, you know, you know, it's still. I have to get my seeds from the crops for some from somewhere. I still need electricity. I still need gasoline for my tractors. You know, there's there's still things. If I had all the land in the world, I still would not have everything I need for to be, you know, to self sustain. I still need to get it from someone or somewhere, and they're going to be using a currency called money in order for me to exchange, and you know, and get what I need to live. good amen amen so I, I i like all the answers so far i like all the answers we 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 need we need land if we want to grow food but even if we do have a lot of land that still might not be enough we still have to get the seeds from somewhere now one thing you said was if we have to get the seeds from somewhere um in ancient times if you saw a tree and a tree was growing food you could grab the fruit the land didn't necessarily b belong to for example like um people didn't just say you know i own the land the land was for the people now a king could could make that claim I, I i own the land but if you're just out and say you're out in the public you could 
if you saw like a tree or something that's growing food or you you could pick from the tree and you could get your seed that way but today if you do that you got to be very careful because we in today's society there's ownership of land in fact i'll, t I'll give you a good example so when the europeans were here in the u.s and new york the the europeans decided they wanted to perch purchase new york from the native americans so what they did is they told the native americans will buy this land from you that is new york now to the native americans there's really no concept of you can own land the land was for everyone so when the europeans who were here in america the colonizers they came and they purchased the land they basically got a real bad deal because they didn't realize what they were signing up for they ended up giving up new york and and now if you try to if the, if the native americans try to do anything on that land well now they got an army to deal with and so they they learn their lesson and of course that happened all over the u.s lots of contracts and deals made and and also they and many times they just go into war and taking the land but this is a a concept that wasn't always it wasn't always this way is what i what i'll say um did someone uh have their hand raised ty has his hand raised oh go ahead ty okay yep we can't hear you if you're talking I'll come back I'll come back to you so now so my answer as I was saying earlier is it depends what do we mean by work before we go into what is work I want us to examine this picture because originally yah intended for us to have what's on the left side which was the garden ty i see your back did you want to comment okay it looks like it's still not working okay Can me? yes Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties, um, but I turned it off and turned it back on. So if you were talking and I just cut you off, you can finish your statement and then I'll Go come ahead. back. To you. Go ahead. Okay. So I've been trying to talk since you asked the question, should we work for money? And that question brings up many questions and I'm going to do my best not to rabbit trail. But when I did a study on work, work meant many things that was outside of what I thought. Um, but I will say one of the things that came to my mind was land. And you already started talking about it. But I watched the episode when I was still in U.S. of it was like this last episode of Little House on the Prairie. Some of y'all probably never heard of that. But most of y'all in there probably know Little House on the Prairie. And the very last episode, they basically blew up their town because they found out that even though they purchased the land, the land wasn't really theirs. It was, it belonged to uh, the guy that bought the land first. And so they were essentially renting land, thinking that they own land. And so... I'm thinking we're in a pagan system with pagan officials who are who are leading um, 
And so you buy a house because I bought a house. If you've never bought a house, you 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 get a whole stack of papers you read from. Most of the time, you can't understand it, so you get help. You get someone to help you read it. But you can't say, or who knows, if they are just as pagan as the ones doing everything. Plus, if if you're African American, they were already doing their own things with that. But the bottom line was, the land ain't really yours. That could be very a very credible thing to think about. So you're in a land that's not your own because you were taken to a land to a foreign nation that wasn't that you didn't know. You didn't know the language. You didn't know nothing. They put you on land. They let you believe you own land. And then they go, just like you don't own the land, you don't own the streets. So they can close the streets and go, hey, you can't buy or sell. You can't even leave. And so my mindset for work is my thought was. That's a great question, but it's opening up so many other questions. Okay, good point. That's I'm I'm glad you brought that up because that's what, exactly why I'm doing this study. Because when I study this, it's just more and more questions that arise, and 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 yeah, he has an answer for all these things. So. Now, back back to this slide. On the left side, we see the garden. On the right side, we, we see the city. I would like people to put in the chat. You can come and talk if you want to as well. But maybe put in the chat what comes to mind. It can be like one or two words, not big sentences. Just give me phrases like, what comes to mind when you look at the garden when you look at this picture and you think and we're talking about the garden that's in the scriptures the garden of eden gone eden what comes to your mind when you look at this in terms of whatever you want just whatever you want i'm just open Okay. Okay, I see food, paradise, a country, I believe, flowers, health, beautiful, having what is free versus not buying. I like that connection. Yes, connection. Anybody else? I know there's got to be more than that. Covenant. Yes, that's a good one. Life. Growth, reproduction. Yes. Paradise. Yah's original intent. Okay. Difference. Man and woman. God's original plan. Okay. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Now, let's look at the right side. You see a city. What comes to mind? It's a skyline. Low keys, sorry, death, man made, hard work. Poverty, commerce, destruction. Status. Pollution. Now, I'm hearing all negative things. Are there, are there any good things about a city? We all live in cities. <laughs> can't be all. It can't be completely bad. Access. Beauty. 
different people. Convenience. Yes. Never liked the city, but okay. Convenience. Different country connections, jobs. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank these are all good. Um networking. Yes. Networking. So I like all of your um I like all of your um uh, different descriptions of both the garden and city, and I believe they're all correct. Pollution, that's right. Um the garden obviously was Yah's original intent for us. In city, I put I put this scripture because this is the first time you see city. Genesis 4, 17. It says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch, and built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So before, before the fall, before Adam and Eve was kicked out, it was all, it was wonderful. It was the garden. But once they had Cain and Abel, Cain kills Abel. And then Cain gets banished, and he's forced to be a vagabond, basically a wanderer, and he's marked with this mark. Eventually, Cain, he uh, knows his wife, and they have a son. And what he does, he calls the name of the city after his son. Before before all of this, there was no need for a city. There was not even a need for a house for Adam and Eve. Because Adam and Eve, they had a different type of body. You don't hear anything about any homes. You don't hear anything about any cities. There was no need for, for any of that. They just lived in the garden, perfect environment. There's no rain. There's no storms. There's none of that. Everything is just wonderful. They're at peace with the animals, the, the fruit and the vegetables. They just grow easily. They do have a, the responsibility of tilling the garden, working the garden. But everything really just grows wonderfully. They don't have to wor worry about thorns and thistles. But now... There's sin, and Cain steps on the scene. And now we have we have cities that come about. And if you read some of the Apocrypha books, it goes into a little bit more detail about that. But I want to show you some of the things that I came up with. And you all were saying some of the same things that I saw. When I think about cities, I think about money-driven. I think about many rules. When I think about the garden, I Think of health. Some rules. There's, there are some rules, but not nearly as many rules as what we have right now today. Remember, the instructions that Yah gave to Adam and Eve were to be fruitful, multiply, keep till, watch over the garden. Don't eat from the tree of knowledge and good, of, good and evil. I might be missing one. But that's about it. If they did those, they were good. They were keeping Yah's covenant. After sin comes in, then more rules come. They're cursed. Yah tells them what they can do. They're, they can't go into the garden anymore there's a sword that's blocking their, their way to the tree of life the woman's desire for her husband you know they, there's more there's more things that now they have to abide by the, the, the elements of the weather you know it's it's, it's not necessarily going to be as ideal and as perfect as it was before so more rules when I think of gar gardening, I think of a hobby. I do hobbies because I want to do them. I do them because they are, they're fun. They have some fun or they have some reward in it. 
the reward is you're going to be able to grow some food for you and your family. Uh, when I think of a city, I think of work. And the type of work I'm talking about is toil and labor and normally things I don't want to do. Sometimes it can be things you want to do. Not not everything in the city is bad. Not all type of work is bad. Many people enjoy their work. But I'm just saying, generally speaking, most people, they don't want to go to their job. Now, the garden, I also think of work because you got to work the garden. You have to maintain the garden. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through each one of these, but I just want you to see some. I'm going to stop here. So in the garden, I think of it as a family activity. I remember going into the garden when I was a kid with my mom. I remember I had one of my best friends. His name was Philip. We called him Deuce. He used to come over and he used to help me plant strawberries. So it reminds me of the family time I had. I was with, I took my boys over to Christopher's house for you for the for those of you that know Christopher. And we helped him plant his garden. And his family did some work. My family did some work, me and my boys. And we would go and we would eat of the food together. So I think of family. But when I think of the cities, now when we're working, it's more of a boss employee type relationship. It's not necessary family. Although you can have a family owned business, but I'm just saying generally speaking, the relationships we have are with an employee and with a boss as opposed to family. Someone said this, in a city is built by man, but the garden was built by Yah. So we see some similarities, but we see a whole lot of things that are actually contrary to one another as well. The garden, when I look at this picture, it just seems fulfilling. Work many times is exhausting. When I say work, I'm talking about it in the context of a job. Many times when you get off work, you are happy to be done. We're working for the weekend. We're working for Friday night when we don't have to go into work no more. And then when Monday comes, we're like, oh, man, dreading going into work. We look forward to vacations. Generally speaking, I know this is not everybody, but generally speaking. So. I want us to, you know, just kind of have these things in mind as we're going to start talking about what work is and what what money is. We want to know what was Yah's original intent versus what we have now. And like I said, the city is not all bad, but I think we can all agree it's not the ideal ideal situation. Okay. Another thing, the garden seems to be more about needs driven. When you're growing food, you're doing it to meet a need. Whereas at a job, um, it's not, it's, it can be, it, it is about a needs as well, but it's also about those wants that we have. Because, you know, when you're growing a garden, you have food that you eat, right? Or you, you you can even grow other types of things as well. It doesn't have to be just, just like fruits and vegetables. You can also grow different types of materials like cotton and whatever. But typically in a garden is food. That's to meet a need, which is hunger. In the, gar in the city, um, we're also going to make money so that we can pay our bills. But we're also going so that we can have all the nice stuff that we want as well. So I just not, not saying it's bad. I'm just pointing out these differences. Also, in, in the city, we have little control. Little control of what happens over a city. Because it's ran by a government. The, the garden was ran by a government as well. That government was the kingdom of Yah. 
But in the kingdom of Yah, what Yah told Adam and Eve, he said, have dominion. So the almighty king of the universe, he created everything. He decides to give Adam delegated authority. He says, have dominion over all the animals, all the birds, everything under the sea, over all the creatures, over everything that I've created. I want you to have dominion over it. And so basically, Yah gave Adam a huge responsibility, a lot of authority and power. And you can also you also know that because Adam named everything. He's naming the animals. And if he has the power and ability to name, that means he was given the authority. Now, in a city, when I think about a city, I have very little control. I may have some control in my house, but even that is split with my wife. And even then, we don't have everything under control. But in the garden, it was different. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, the other thing, last thing. <laughs> when I think of city, I think of taxes. As soon as I see the skyline, I'm thinking, oh, taxes. Garden, and I think about no taxes. Where did that concept come from? It came from a government, but not Yah's government. And lastly, the major theme in the garden serving, service. The reason I think of service. And, and I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking these things through. So some of you may have a different opinion and you can chime in if you want to. But the reason I think of service when I think of garden, gardening, is because first you have a seed, you plant it, you, you, I'm sorry, first you till the soil, then you plant that seed and then you water, you wait for it to grow. And then the end result is you have some type of produce that you can give to someone you can eat it yourself or you can give it. Eventually, someone's going to go into the kitchen and we might cook it. We're going to prepare it for not only ourselves, but for our family. So I see a work that's being done, but it's a it's a work that involves a service to someone. When I think about the cities, the type of jobs that we do in the cities, the major theme is business. That's what comes to my mind, business. You see, there's a difference. In business, you can serve, and there are service businesses, but they're still businesses. So the end result of serving in a garden, working in a garden, serving in a garden, is that you produce something that you and your family and everyone can enjoy. All your friends, whoever you give it to, they're going to be able to enjoy the fruit of your labor. As a business, you'll get to enjoy a portion of the fruit of your labor. But actually, there's a group of people, there's some executives and some managers and some CEOs and some shareholders who may get to enjoy a bigger, way bigger portion of the fruit of your labor than you will. I'll give one example. <coughs> I know we all understand this concept, but this is on my mind right now. I went to a client in, I think I was in Ohio, actually. I was in Toledo or Cleveland, somewhere around there, maybe even Detroit. I don't remember. I was working for Whirlpool. They have a lot of facilities in that area. I went in there and my team we installed some software for them and we developed it in the first day we implemented that software within the first day we saved them thirty thousand dollars the one day because our software recognized a problem that they didn't realize the root of the problem and so every day they have this $30,000 problem. 
just keeps compounding and compounding and they don't know why is it happening what's the vendor what's the product that's causing the issues on the manufacturing line why do we keep having to replace that well when i installed the product or the software then they were able to see okay this is where our issue is at they were so happy because that's going to save them millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of dollars possibly billions because i don't even know how many different manufacturing lines were having that problem i was only focused on one line so think about this i could have potentially saved them billions of dollars or i should say my team may have potentially saved them literally billions of dollars at least hundreds of millions and yet they give us a six-figure check does that seem fair when you think about it maybe maybe not we signed up a contract to work with them and that's what we agreed to get paid but that's that's the type of thing i'm, I'm referring to when i say it's 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 business meaning yes you will get paid but it's not going to always be you getting what you deserve and i'm sure we all have stories like that let's see rose said the city for me is very self-serving too and i think the garden is more selflessness selfless serving yes i agree okay so let's keep going actually i'm going to skip this slide for now israel wants a king uh, no i won't let's we're gonna i'm gonna take my time we'll do this so i'm sorry one second so when i think about cities i also think about governments and i think about rulers so quickly what i want us to do is we're going to look at first samuel 8 and we're going to see that israel decided they wanted to be like the other nations so let's read this first samuel 8 Can, can you all still see my screen? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, 1 Samuel 8. Now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel. Oh, that's a good name. And the name of his second, Abijah, they were judges in Beersheba. But his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest game took bribes and perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. So here is the key right here. Israel, Israel had judges over Israel. So we have the times, time of the judges and Samuel was one of those judges. And he had sons, but his sons were not like Samuel. His sons were unjust. They took bribes. They, they perverted justice. And they did not walk in the ways of Yah. And you can read about them when you read the book of Samuel. So the elders in Israel, these are the le leaders. They're saying to, to Samuel, look, you're, you're old. Your sons, they're not like you. So basically they're concerned that his sons are going to to rule in a way that's not right, you know, when Samuel dies. So they say, make us a king to judge us, to judge like all the nations. So they are looking at what was happening in all the other nations instead of focusing on what Yah said in his word. Yah said, I will be your king. I'm your king. I'm your father. And he and he appointed priests and judges to rule over them, not kings. Verse six. But the but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to Yah and Yah said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, 
but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. So Yah letting Samuel know, you know what? Do what the people say. Because they're not rejecting you, Samuel. This isn't about you. They're actually, when, when they say this, they're actually rejecting me because Yah knew their heart. And I would say this is even something that we deal with now. There's many people that say that they believe in Yah's word. But they would have rather have a king rule over them than Yah rule over them. So what does Yah do? do? He gives them over to what they want. Verse 8, according to all the works which they have done, which the... Uh, I'm sorry, which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, which they have forsaken me and serve other gods. So so they are doing to you also. Now, therefore, heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them that the behavior of the king who will reign over them. So Samuel told all the words of Yah to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen. And some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties. Will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. So he's, Samuel's letting them know the king that you have appointed for you he's going to take your sons they're going to be serving in his army they're going to be run uh they're going to be uh appointed as captains over thousands and over fifties he's going to make some of them plow the ground they're going to have to reap the harvest some going to have to make weapons of war and and equipment he says he will take your daughters to be per perfumers cooks and bakers this is what the the kings of the nations were doing and he says and he will take the best of your fields your vineyards and your olive groves and give them to his servants he will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants and he will take your male servants your female servants your finest young men and your donkeys and put them to his work. That's the key. They're going to be put to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep. You will be his servants and you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves and Yah will not hear you in that day. This tenth of your sheep is like a tax. Because this is not the tenth that goes to Yah, to the Most High. This is a tenth that goes to the to the king so he's taking a tenth of your cattle of your sheeps and and it says that they're gonna you're gonna cry but in that day i'm not gonna hear you because this is what you've chosen for yourselves yeah just like taxes nevertheless the people refused to obey the voice of samuel and they said no but we will have a king over us that we we also may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Samuel heard all the words of the people and he repeated them in the hearing of Yah. So Yah said to Samuel, heed their voice and make them a king. Samuel said to the men of Israel, every man go to his city. So this is what Israel wanted. And this is what Israel got. They wanted a king. They wanted a king that was like the other nations. And what did the other nations do? The other nations, they took the best of the people and they used them to plow the field. They used them to, um, to be in the army. They used the sons and they used the daughters to make perfumes and to make whatever was the king's desire. That's what happened. And so Israel had to face the same thing. You see, Israel had some good kings, but mostly they had kings that were not so good. And even the kings that we would consider good kings, even they had a whole bunch of issues and caused a whole lot of problems. 
even David and even Solomon caused a lot of issues for Israel. But David was one of the more righteous kings. Solomon, because of his sin, the kingdom was divided. So we, I want to introduce you this topic of you seeing all these negative things happening when you fall out of the original way that Yah intended. We saw the garden. Everyone had much more delightful things to say about the garden than when we got to the cities. Yah has a way for Israel. He says, I'm your king and I'm appointing priests and judges over you. But they decided they wanted their own king. So what does the king do? He, does, he makes them do all these things that they're not going to want to do and he taxes them. He's going to require money from them. So we see this line of, of, of rulership. First, Yah is king in the garden. Next, you have priests. Remember, Moses says to Aaron, your sons are going to be the priests. The Levites, the sons of Aaron, are going to be the priesthood. Then we have judges that come. And the judges uh, were to rule over all the dis disputes of, of Israel as a nation, along with the priests. Then, then Israel says, we don't, want, we don't want just to have priests and we don't want just to have judges because we got wicked judges. We want a king also like the nation. Then I'm missing a box here, but eventually Israel is going to be conquered over and over and over again. And then they're going to be scattered. The last thing that's going to happen is we're going to have Yahushua reign as king. We're going to go back to what he originally intended, which was what happened in the garden. Okay. So I can come back to this scripture. So let's go on a trip. Not going to be too much longer because we're getting close to 1030, but we're going to go on a trip. I think this is going to help us visualize some things conceptually. We're going to go to Brazil. I've never been to Brazil before, and I want to go one day. So imagine we're going to Brazil, and in Brazil... These are the types of things we're expecting to see. This is why we're excited. We know there's some beautiful areas. We know that there's beaches, there's cities, there are there's the jungle. We can go hiking in the forest. Um, there's there's all types of fun, beautiful things we can do when we go to Brazil. The question is. What should we take on this journey? What should we take on this journey? Let's imagine that we're going to go to Brazil and we're going to be there for, let's say, at least a month. So since we know we're going to be there for a month, Ty says... Only what you need as it pertains to your stay. Okay, so that's all we want to take. We should know the rules. Yes, we should know the rules. Any, anybody want to get more specific, though? What's something that you would take if you went to Brazil? Proper Clothes. identification. Yes. Clothes. Yep. Passport, money. We need to know the area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Those are all good things. Se security. What do you mean by we would take security with us? Emergency. Okay, that makes sense. You want to be prepared for an emergency. 
Okay, all that makes sense. Know what areas to stay away from. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. Let's okay, one more. I might study the language a bit. Yeah, that might be helpful. This is always good to have at least a few phrases, you know, when you're going to a country where people don't speak your language. And if you go into Brazil, they're going to be speaking Portuguese. So if you want to go anywhere outside the tourist area or the hotel um, area, then it'd be helpful to know at least some basic words in Portuguese. Understand the history. Yes, understanding the history, the culture, those things that would be good because you don't want to offend people. And it'd be good to know just because just you're going to a new place. Okay, let's let's keep going. So I'm, let's imagine we have this itinerary. We have some travel instructions that the, uh, that the travel agency gives you. You paid for this trip to go to Brazil, and now you're getting this email. And in the email, it says, read carefully before traveling. And this is what it says. It says, bring one set of clothing for three months <laughs> now that first thing would kind of mess me up what do you mean one set of clothing for three months anyways that's what they say don't carry money on you okay don't bring any food bring sandals bring a walking cane so this is what your itinerary, your your and your travel instructions. This this is your travel instructions. What you need um, before you go over to Brazil. So now I put in the in the yellow some reasons why. They're telling you to only bring one set of clothing for three months. So the travel agency is saying you only need to bring one set, set of clothing. Yes, you better call customer service <laughs> about this email because your, your, your clothes are not going to wear out. So you don't need to bring any. Don't carry any money on you because you're going to get robbed most likely if you carry money. So don't bring any. Don't bring food. Food's going to be provided for you. So just trust us. So, so Rosa said access to washing might be limited. It might be. So this is some of the reasons, but they didn't tell you this. So I'm going to ask you a question. If you saw this itinerary, you're, you're, you're getting ready to go to Brazil. Would you still go? Would you still go if you saw this? Can somebody talk to me? <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. The answer is no. No, you're not gonna go. Okay. I hope I I would hope you wouldn't go. Uh, David says he's leery, and Ty says it depends on if Yah said. See, Ty's all spiritual spiritual comes everything I, was just, uh, I don't know i just it just sound like trafficking to me but i mean that is that's just me would you i didn't hear you rose say oh, it. I, I, I said well i mean <laughs> it just sounds like trafficking to me but i mean that's just me though it sounds like trafficking yes <laughs> that's me <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know yep yep Okay. So we're broke, yeah, we're broke and, poor, and poor, and this is like a change of a life. Yeah, I mean, but these people telling you to get a walking cane and uh, <laughs> don't bring some food, and also you're gonna have one change of clothes. To <laughs> 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 yeah, what the heck is walking cane for? That's what I'm saying. Probably because they're about to hike up to different <laughs> location <laughs> tie. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. But it also sounds like what the disciples went through. Amen. 
Now I got now I got some Bible students in here. Amen. I can agree. Now I got some Bible students. Mark 6, 7 to 13. I was hoping that would clue somebody. So Yahusha said this in Mark 6, 7. He said, and he called the 12 to himself and began to send them out two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits. He commanded them, take nothing for the journey except a staff, sandals, and not to put on two tunics. That means two articles of clothing or like a coat. So we we said we wouldn't do this. Some, or some of y'all said that. I didn't say it. Y'all said y'all wouldn't do this. This is exactly what Yahushua told his apostles to do. Hold on, Joel. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I didn't say I wouldn't do it. I just said the perspective is definitely a little hey, bit off. Hey, but we'll switch it up now. I did not know the scriptures. I was not feeling People you said, said what you said. Knowledge. Now, if I would have knew the scripture, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm down with the sponta spontaneity of the Holy Spirit. Come okay, on, okay, okay. Uh, see, Ty was Ty was said he was smart. He says it depends on what y'all said. That was a smart answer. But so let let's let's look at this. We're going to dissect this. We're going to dissect this. And this, we're all going to get to money, but it probably won't be to next week because we got to go through this first. So Yahushua, first thing I want you to notice, it says, and he called to the 12 disciples. So he's making a call to all 12 of them. Then he sends them. Secondly, he gives them power. Then third, he commands them. Then when he commands them, this is the instructions he said. He said, take nothing for the journey except the staff. No bag. Don't take, don't take a, any bread. So the bag meaning you're not going to be able to store nothing. Don't take anything. I know you got some stuff you might want to take with you because you're going on this long trip. But I don't want you taking anything to store. I don't want you taking any food for this journey. I don't want you taking any money in your money sack. I want you to wear sandals. You're going to need that. And I don't want you to bring in extra pieces of clothing. You got one piece that you need, and that's it. So just like in this situation where we're given this itinerary, I just wanted you to get a feel for maybe what the disciples thought. Now, for, for them... It would have been difficult. Can you just imagine? Bring one set of clothing. What are we supposed to? We're going to be stinking and stuff. What if they get messed up and they get torn? We're out there on the road walking and stuff. And you expect us just to bring one piece of clothing? And we're going to be there for about three months? You don't want us to carry no money? What are we supposed to eat with? You know, we, we need money. We're going to a new place, someplace we haven't been to. We don't have the luxury of a garden. People just use money. Go ahead, Rose. You know, uh, I don't, sorry, my microphone's taking a little, okay, sorry, my microphone's taking a little minute. Um, I think when you said that, it reminds me of like uh, when Moshe led the people from Egypt. Yes. I just thought about that. I'm not going to take up too much time, but I think about how they must have felt like after going through that, like they're leaving every, even though it was freeing, they're leaving everything they knew. Everything. Everything, you know? <laughs> so 40 days, 49, everybody knows, you know? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the instruction was slightly different for them because they were allowed to take a whole bunch of things. But actually, those things were not useful for them in the desert. The things that they took, all the gold and the silver, remember they plundered the Egyptians. Even they had, even though they had all those things, the purpose for those things was for later. It didn't really help them. So, yes, it was as if they were taking nothing because even the food that they took, remember, they took unleavened bread. 
because they didn't have time to make anything. And so, but eventually they ran out of that. That, that only lasted for about a month. And so then that means if they're going to the to the wilderness to eventually go to the promised land, that means they knew at some point we're going to run out of food. Go ahead. Uh, that, uh, Rose. that kind of sparked another thought when you said that, too. And it's like, you know how people say that history repeats itself? I think about when you're t speaking about this instant, uh, instant, and then also when you're talking about pr that perspective, it's kind of like if you are wise, you would understand the uh, the wisdom within that for what Yah is calling us to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just thinking about how they took like this instance, for example, they took these people, the disciples, they took nothing, right? Basically nothing. And then then you go to Moshe and Israel. Egypt, how they took the things that of the world, basically, right? But it was not going to be useful to them in the yeah. heavenly, right? And then now you think about those two perspectives Yah is teaching us through those lessons that um, to choose wisely the path that is um, edific edifying onto our soul, our spirit with his, with our journey to him back into the promised land. Oh, that's perfect. Yes, exactly. You, you, um, Making some of my points for me. Oh man! In fact, <laughs> the scripture that you just referred to, I'm about I'm about to go there. So now we see the we see the itinerary or the travel instructions of Yahusha. This is his instructions, and it's the same exact thing. This is the apostles' journey. Now they're not going on airplanes. They're probably going to go on camels, or they're going to be walking. But this is what they're supposed to bring, and what and they're not supposed what they're not supposed to bring. It, it literally said, "Take nothing. Don't bring anything except for sandals and a staff." I'm just saying a cane, just to put it in today's lingo. So, I was asking myself, "What are you trying to teach us about this things that about these things that they were supposed to bring?" What does this teach us? No money, no food, no money sack, no material things. But you want them to bring sandals and a, and a staff. Before I give my thoughts, is there any anybody have any ideas? Maybe you have some ideas. Why does he mention sandals and a staff? Go ahead, Ty. Um, um, what comes to my mind is um, so we can help lead. Uh, I think of actually what's coming to my mind is, you know, you need a staff. Sometimes you can't reach stuff. Staff will help you reach stuff. And so I'm thinking about how easy it is in the garden. And if I had sandals and that don't ever wear out and then I have a staff for um poking things, grabbing things, because I, I feel like if he's going to give me channels that are not going to wear out, then he's going to give me the strength to also not wear out. So I would use the staff for poking at fruit. I don't know. I don't know precise, but I feel like it's whatever he's taking us to is going to be so easy to live there that all we need is a staff and some sandals and one pair of clothes. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. Let me read the comments. I just saw one comment. The, the uh, staff equals stability, staff equals support. They're to travel light and come back. Is, okay. And they, and they will be kicked out and need to leave as soon as possible. Okay. Traveling light to help, maybe. And, and as what you were saying with the staff, so as far as the staff to, to use, to basically to assist you with different types of things. But I'm assuming that's G that's saying staff equals stability and staff equals support. I like that too. Uh, go ahead, Rose. Okay, hold on. Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. What I think about, um, this might, this, it, just the staff itself, you know how the word speaks about his Maybe it's a symbolic thing too, 
Your mm -hmm. rod and your staff shall comfort me. Yes. Oh, I think about the uh, yea through I walk the valley shadow death scripture when I think about those situations. But I also think about um, when when I was younger, they used to take us to youth camp. They used to take us out to the mountain and we used to need uh, those kind of things to kind of fill around for sometimes protection. But I mean, um, I, I remember this, old, not older lady, but she was like probably my age now and she was using it to like go over the heels like or to test uh the solid ground and stuff to make sure it wasn't like potholes and things you know mm -hmm. yeah so that's what i was thinking about all all good that's 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 really good when i thought of the the staff well let me see prophet miller says that a staff helps bear the weight of the burden yes exactly that goes towards the support and stability yeah, when you when you think of a staff, the reason people use a staff, or like I said, a cane in today's vernacular, is to help people that is to assist you when you're walking. It's to give you that extra support to make it easier to help you with the extra load, the, the burden, like like he was saying, to help you carry the weight a little bit easier, the weight of your body. So it's a support mechanism. And the sandals, of course, are for your feet. So they assist you when you're walking. And so as you were just saying about possibly this having a symbolic meaning and, and you also using thy staff uh, comfort me, I, I like that as well. Um, what I thought about was both of these things are assisting you in your walk. The sandals are helping you in your walk and the staff are helping helping you support you in your walk i also if i'm thinking sub symbolically i also thought about the putting on the full armor and i thought about having your feet um having the the gospel of the preparation of peace having your feet shotted with the gospel of the preparation of peace, which is basically the word. It's the good news of the word. And so I see both of these as support, mechanis support mechanisms for your walk, both physically, but maybe as you were saying, maybe there's something spiritually here. I see the stability as well. And I see, uh, as what Ty was saying as well, there may be something that you need a little bit of help with. And that staff is going to be that extra assistance as you're walking, as you're going. There's, there's a bunch of things that come to my mind. I'm thinking about the staff that Moses, we talked about the other week, last week. We talked about the staff that Moses was holding up or the rod that he was holding up. And when that, when that rod was up in the air, Israel was winning the battle. And when it was down below they started losing and he had support he had two people helping him but let's keep going now i'm going to go to the scripture that alludes to what you were referring to rose deuteronomy 29 5 to 6 it says and i have led you 40 years in the wilderness your clothes have not worn out on you and your sandals have not worn out on your feet you have not eaten bread nor have you drunk wine or similar drink, so that you may know that I am Yah, your Elohim. So now, when I see Yahushua is telling the apostles, don't bring clothing. Don't bring any food. Don't bring any money. Perhaps Yahushua was in a way reminding them of what the children of Israel did. In the wilderness said your clothes even if you only have one pair of clothes even if you have only one pair of sandals trust me enough that i'm going to take care of you that they're going to last because remember yahushua he is the word remember he's the angel of the presence he is the one that led them he was the one that brought salvation remember we studied the angel of the presence and the angel of the presence is the angel that led the children of Israel into the wilderness 
the angel of the presence went before them the angel of the presence was their deliverer as the book of isaiah says this same angel of the presence is also the word of yah and this angel of the presence yahusha the word is reminding now his apostles his disciples of what he did for the ancient israelites in the wilderness so i'm gonna read the next verse it says also he said to them in whatever place you enter a house stay there till you depart from that place and whoever will not receive you nor hear you i'm almost done when you depart from there shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them assuredly i say to you it will be more tolerable for sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city so they went out and preached the, that people should repent and they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them this will be my last slide we're not going to get to the money but i want you to see the point this is our goal this is four things that i notice yahusha he called them remember the scripture says that he called the 12. then he began to send them so they were sent next he also empowered them he gave them power so that they could cast out devils and then lastly they were obedient we know they were obedient because in verse 12 they went out and preached that people should repent and they cast out many demons using that power he gave them and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them and they did all of this with one set of clothing no money no food sandals and a staff next week we're going to talk about this work versus the other kind of work which is an occupation there's multiple words for work, but we're going to focus on two of them. And we're going to hopefully be able to answer this question, should we work for money? We're going to see it depends on what kind of work. But because it's past 1030, I'm going to stop for now. Any questions or comments before we go? Okay, I will end in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We thank you. Thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for uh, enlightening us on what's going on in this world. Uh, I thank you, Father, that you're not leaving us in the dark. I thank you, Father, for the prophets and for the teachers and for the apostles and for the evangelists, for the pastors that are sharing and exposing what's going on in the secret so that we are not take uh we're not surprised by what happens in this world i also thank you father most of all that we don't have to be worried we don't have to be in fear i thank you father that israel the woman the remnant is going to be kept safe i thank you father that we don't have to worry because you are our king you are our father I thank you, Father, for your word that we have to hold on to. Just like we learned about faithfulness, we learned that um, hearing, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. So we have your word, which is the substance, something that's tangible that we can grab onto and hold on to no matter what's going on. I thank you, Father, that you've given us your word. I also thank you for this, for this lesson that you're teaching us and you're going to continue to teach us your original plan and what you intend to go back to and what the purpose of money is for us and what your purpose is for Israel, especially in these last days. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Yahushua's name, amen. Amen. Amazing Bible study. Amen. 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 amen.
I have to go, but I love you guys very much. Amen. I love y'all too. I gotta go to work. Night night. Amen. Good night. Thank you. Night night, y'all, and it's afternoon for me. Yeah.